Broadway, the music of George Benson and Earl Clue, and the Peking Acrobat. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Johnny. You think I was wearing yellow shorts and I had a black number on my back? <laughs> I've been doing this show for almost 25 years, and I think those of you who know me know that I would not resort to a cheap trick to get laughs or easy applause. Right? That's not my style. But how about those Lakers? <laughs> yeah. Been a bad weekend for me. I had the uh, Celtics and Clooney. No, I, Cooney, Cooney. Well, it should have been. He could have beaten Betty. Betty Clooney could have beaten him last night. No, I, I, I was with the Lakers. I'm from Los Angeles. They had a ticker tape parade in Los Angeles today, the Lakers. Yeah. You see, now in New York, they'd have ticker tape, right? Yeah. Out here, it's a little more mellow. They threw shredded lettuce out the window. <laughs> this is the Tonight Show, the show that asked the burning question, now that the Lakers have won, what the hell is Jack Nicholson going to do with himself? <laughs> Just sit there watching the Lakers. <laughs> the Celtics are a great ba basketball team. But they... They, really are. Now, they... they seem to play their best in Boston Garden. The Celtics are a little like Gary Hart. They'd have won if they'd only stayed home. Oh, this weather, do you believe this out here? Views on vacation, this is great, greatest California weather. Today, you can tell it's great. I walked out and you see, you know the crosswalk sign out here but on Olive Avenue? It said, frolic and don't frolic. <laughs> That's what it said. <laughs> A little item that I saw, uh, <laughs> I didn't really see it, somebody told me. No, nobody told me, it's a joke. Uh, they had a recent survey and they asked 1,000 doctors what medicine they preferred for tension headaches if they were stranded on a desert island. And a thousand doctors answered Donna Rice. <laughs> Let's take a poll now. How many of you watched the President of the United States last night make his speech? <laughs> we have Nancy and Michael and Maureen. The president of the United... He met, must make him very happy. Nobody else saw the speech? Well, he talked about defending, uh, you know, the Persian Gulf. And the situation is getting a little heated up in the Persian Gulf. Bob Hope just put Brooke Shields on red alert. <laughs> right here. If you didn't uh, see the speech, I'll tell you what he said. The president said we must protect the Straits of Hormuz. The gays, I guess, are on their own. But the Straits of Hormuz... I saw, I saw the president's speech, I don't want to say it was dull, but halfway through, he took out a slide projector and showed his, some pictures he took on his trip to Venice. <laughs> now, the, uh, the president is criticizing the papers for making the summit sound like it was a failure. Did you read his quote or hear his quote last night? He said, there's only one man who can tell how things really went behind closed doors. As soon as he finds that man, he's going to let us know. <laughs> well, Jerry Falwell's. Now, Jerry Falwell's in the news every day. See what Jerry asked PTL viewers to do this week? In addition to their regular monthly donation, 
monthly pledge, Jerry says, send me an additional $50. That, that, that's pretty nervy. That's like asking, Warren Beatty asking for donations to make Ishtar 2. <laughs> And Jim and Tammy are in the news again. They, they, look, I just reported on what they said. They said that they're going to be back on the air within 30 days. Now, what is it about television evangelists that always makes them think everything is on a, a time limit? Oral Roberts said, if I don't get this by the end of the month, Jerry Falwell says, I've got to have it by the end of the May. They must think God has a 24-second shot clock. <laughs> Anyway, we got a good show. Did you know the actors who do cartoon voices went on strike? Yeah, yeah that's strange. They asked Scooby-Doo. <laughs> for, for a comment today, and he said, so. <laughs> anyway, I guess they... Screen Actors Guild said they're not going to budge, even if the Smurfs argue till they're blue in the face. So, so. Anyway, tonight. New suit, huh? Look at this. Pa a man is wearing a, pa that's a paisley. That's a paisley suit. Yes, it is. All the way. Pants, Good. coat, the works. Very nice. All right. Tonight, we have Mr. Tim Conway. Yeah. Ooh, so. Two really superb musical artists, George Benson and Earl Clue, are here. <laughs> Two gentlemen from China who do amazing things. They are part of a, an international troupe that plays all over the world. The famous Peking Acrobats are with us. There we are. rechargeable lights, you need an extra hand to shine them where you want. So First Alert created Ready Light, the rechargeable light with a swivel head. Ready Light from First Alert, always ready to lend a hand. McDonald's introduces Chicken Salad Oriental. Tossed fresh all day, new chicken, salad, Oriental with tender chunks of chicken. Fresh green peppers, chow mein noodles. Fresh and tasty, you can take anything. It's a good time, it's a great taste. Help me come. New chicken salad, oriental. We've got sunshine each and every day. Tonight we have Tim Conway, George Benson, Earl Clue, the Peking Acrobats. And uh, now, I'll tell you about last week we had Madonna on the show. And I had a piece of material which is right now in front of me. The crowd that came to see Madonna came to see Madonna. Ooh. They didn't care about the monologue. They were, <laughs> during the monologue, they were <laughs> like this. <laughs> we started to do this. 
And finally, I said, why don't we just put this He's aside, and, and we brought Madonna yeah. out. And However. A good, a good move it was. But we don't like to throw anything away. This is like a slaughterhouse around here. <laughs> <laughs> right, you save anything. And, and it has to do with the uh, United States Constitution. So we thought we'd try it tonight, okay? Yeah. 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 As you know, this is the 200th year anniversary of the Constitution, which was uh, in 1787, of course. That would be 200 years, right? Right. And... Between then and now, they've had some 26 amendments to the United States Constitution. The most recent one, do you remember what it is? No. You see, you'd know all these things if you are in high school. Yeah. But you forget these. The 26th Amendment. What was that? Prohibition. 18-year-old vote. Prohibition. Man says, no, that wasn't the 26th. The 18-year-old got the vote. Right. The 26th Amendment. Second Amendment. I think the, uh, what was the Prohibition vote? Wasn't that the 19th? 16th. Well, you'd know that. <laughs> is it over yet? <laughs> Let's drink to it. Yeah. Uh, the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. The Fifth Amendment, of course, the right to a jury trial, self-incrimination. Uh, what else? Thirteenth Amendment, prohibited slavery. Ah, the Eighteenth Amendment brought in prohibition. What was that really called? That there was a name for that. Volstead Act. Volstead Act. Volstead Act. Yeah. Freddie would remember that. He knew Volstead personally. <laughs> it was repealed by the Twenty-First Amendment in 1933. The Twenty-Second Amendment limited a person to two terms of office. Now. Needless to say, those amendments had passed. There were lots of amendments that were brought in. Uh, that didn't make it? What? That didn't make it? I was going to say uh, very close to that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that were not passed, and some of them were a little, little crazy. But our staff researcher here at NBC, Survey Villachez, uh, <laughs> was in Philadelphia recently and uncovered some startling amendments that simply were not passed. And I'm going to read some of those to you. Um, the Second Amendment, as you know, gave the right to bear arms. There was another amendment put through by the, uh, originally uh, by some group called the Right to Arm Bears. Uh, because to protect them against uh, slob hunters. Uh, but that one that didn't pass. Here's an amendment that didn't go. <laughs> and the Madonna crowd knew something. <laughs> Following the death of a president, president, here's an amendment that didn't go. The order of secession shall be vice president, speaker of the house, and then crazy Eddie. <laughs> Let's see some of the more uh, funny ones. This one here. No American president duly elected shall be sworn into office upon a copy of Ann Landers petting what every teenager should know. <laughs> they actually put that in. Maybe you ought to save this for another night. <laughs> No. No. <laughs> no, because if you try to do it the third time, you know it's dead. If we don't make it this time, we won't you know make it's it. Dead. But I think I, I owe it to myself. Why do I owe it to myself? I don't know why I owe it to myself. <laughs> okay, let's edit those out. <laughs> All right, here's one I think you'll like. Any person shall have the right to become president, provided that person is a Native American over 35 years of age and has never purchased anything sold on the home shopping network. Men in Salem, Massachusetts, shall no longer have the right to drown witches unless the witch exceeds the monthly limit on her MasterCard. <laughs> Whole page there. <laughs> now, here's one. If this doesn't get a laugh, if, this, if you don't think this is amusing, and you're the judge, and be honest in your reaction to this, I'll end this whole thing right after this one. Because I laughed at this. Of course, that does not make me the final judge. You're the final judge. <laughs> I'm just here trying to do a simple boy, trying to do a simple job. <laughs> Here's an amendment that didn't, didn't pass. The words five-star general and Charles Nelson Riley may not appear in the same sentence. <laughs> okay, Tim Conway. <laughs> Did I not say if that did not get a laugh? Okay. You folks, you folks wanted to laugh, though, didn't you? 
But just to, just to end that, they held it in. As soon as you leave the studio tonight, you're going to hear such a, a scream in the parking lot. <clears throat> anyway, we're going to take a, a very long break here. <laughs> no, we're not, because Tim Conway is going to come out with George Benson. He's not going to come out with George Benson. Earl. He'll come out by himself, then George and Earl will come out later. And then the Peking Acrobats. They'll, actually, they'll come out before Tim Conway. First of all, we'll do this, and we'll be right back. Heaven on Earth. Don't get him started about his car. <laughs> hey, Pete, toss me the Quaker State. This new Quaker State with QSX is a miracle. It gives car-carrying people superior engine protection. Look at the sludge other leading motor oils can leave behind. New Quaker State with QSX keeps your engine cleaner to last longer. And that means I might spend the rest of my life in heaven. Warn you. Your Quaker State It's touch and go, but you're thinking about those Mars roasted almonds. You're looking for that little reward. Yeah, you're hanging on because you're dreaming about that Mars buttery caramel. You've got your mind on a Mars. A Mars bar makes it all worthwhile. You want your Mars bar. One great little reward. The Car Caravan of Values is coming to your Dodge dealer. So come in and get a great deal on a U.S. built or imported 87 Dodge. Like Front Wheel Drive Caravan, America's unequaled family wagon. And Grand Caravan with its longer wheelbase. Both have an available overhead cam V6. Another selected 87 models in stock for a limited time. Get 3.7% financing or up to $500 cash back. And you can still save with discount savings packages on certain models. I like it here. Scissors. Steak and all you can eat shrimp. Oh, look at those shrimp, Jody. Come on now, eat up. You too. <laughs> Jody, is your plate still full? Come on, honey. Steak and all you can eat shrimp. Sweetie, just eat one for mommy. Proof. There is such a thing as too much of a good thing. Okay, we're back. <laughs> you folks at home would not believe the laughter here in the studio. <laughs> Moments ago. Moments ago at that uh, joke about five-star yeah. gentlemen. I knew it would happen. <laughs> We've had several members of the um, acrobatic troops from the People's Republic of China on the show before. They are absolutely amazing. Every time you see them, you say, they can't possibly do this. We have two members tonight. Uh, three companies, of, actually, of acrobats are in the United States. This summer, they're performing at the uh, Six Flags Amusement Parks in Dallas, St. Louis, and Atlanta until this Labor Day. Well, so would you welcome, please, Mr. Sheng Wei Min and Mr. Ding Wei Ping. Ladies and gentlemen.
can't be done. <laughs> that simply, <laughs> simply can't be done. Can't be done. Those things look like they're suspended on wires, don't they? Oh, oh. That's, that's marvelous. People have said, when are you going to have some big jugs on the show? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we thought of it. Try to please. And we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Planters Premium Select Popcorn. It pops up golden, fluffy, as good as you remember. Planters Popcorn. That old-time goodness lives on. Don't leave the room. Our reputation is at stake. Because we're doing something you wouldn't expect. Something new. Something fresh. Something exciting. Wrapped up the way you like it. We're putting our reputation at stake, and things are beginning to sizzle. New steak fajitas. Think of it as a Mexican steak sandwich. Chevrolet. It's out of this world. Thursday, Molly catches Dad messing around. Boy, uh, Mom says you're taking a poker. So, did you get lucky tonight? On the Days and Nights of Molly Dodd, Thursday. You know, folks, you're really going to like this show, but don't just take my word for it. Here's our drummer, Anton Fig. Anton? Yeah, it should be all right. Yeah, see, there you go. What did I tell you, huh? Yeah. Water Watch, tomorrow morning at sunrise here on 3. As owner of KHYL-FM, I care about you, the listener. That's why we recently asked many of you what you wanted to hear on 101 FM. You said oldies, your favorites from the 60s and 70s, blended with the best new music. You said friendly disc jockeys that are in touch with you in Sacramento. At Cahill, we listened, and we made some changes just for you. So come to the Hill and tune to 101.1 on your FM dial. And thanks for listening. You don't have Pepsi? You know it don't come easy. No Coke, huh? It don't come easy. Could I get more ice, please? When getting a little thing like a soft drink starts getting hard... You call this a large... Come to 7-Eleven where you'll always get your favorite soft drink fixed by someone who knows just how you like it. You. Now, that's what I call a large. Today's 7-Eleven, where the good things come easy. Great tour. Their computer expects us tomorrow. No room, no bath, no bed. Now what, rent a towel and sleep on the beach? I've got a headache this big, and it's screaming for Excedrin. Excedrin, the headache medicine. Regular strength pain relievers give you only this much medicine. But Excedrin gives you this much more. Nothing proven stronger without a prescription. I had a headache this big, but I took Excedrin, and it's gone. Excedrin, the headache medicine. Also in caplets. Folks, as you are aware, certainly aware, recently certain religious leaders have been accused of not being truthful 
with their congregations. Which has created a new kind of clergy who are hoping to win followers by being totally honest. And we have one of those rare persons here tonight. Would you welcome, please, one of the new leaders, the Reverend Raleigh D. Tucker. <laughs> Thank you. My dear people, tonight I would like to talk to you about money. <laughs> A man came to me last week and he said, Raleigh, how much of the three million dollars we raised for you last week is left? We have four dollars. I saw a look of discontent. I said, there's a reason for this. And he said, what is that reason? And I said, the reason is I'm skimming off the top. <laughs> Not only am I skimming off the top, but I'm banging on the bottom pretty good. <laughs> he said it must be a good feeling to have money. I said it's a blast. <laughs> I only wish the poor people could experience it. <laughs> I said to him, if you want that old-time religion, that's fine, but send me the cash. <laughs> it has made me, my dear friend, thankful. <laughs> At night, before I go to bed, I get on my knees and I look heavenward and I have two words to say. I'm rich! <laughs> now, a man came up to me and he said, Raleigh, <laughs> we hear that you have been drinking. I said, I want to tell you something, my dear friends. As far as I'm concerned, booze is the demon's drink. It can make you wonder who you are, what you are, where you are. I want to tell you, my dear friend, as for liquor, when it comes to me, I love it. <laughs> and I want to tell you, my dear friends, if you haven't tried it, do yourself a favor and pick up a jug. <laughs> It can heal what ails you. <laughs> they say you can't drink this, you can't eat this, you can't smoke this. You pour yourself a tall glass of that sauce and it don't matter. <laughs> they also said, Raleigh, there is a rumor that you have been fooling around with other women. I said, my dear friends, I want to tell you, I am not fooling. <laughs> I'm dead serious. <laughs> my dear friends, I'm not doing some light sparring out there. I'm hitting a heavy bag. <laughs> I got some broads that can go 10 championship rounds. <laughs> this man looked at me and he said, Raleigh, there is a danger that you might lose your wife. I said to him, Yahoo! <laughs> he said, don't you have any feeling for this woman? And I said, I do. 
I have the feeling that if I look at that ugly puss one more time, I'm gonna toss my cookies. <laughs> In closing, my dear friends, <laughs> I want to say that we are not asking you for money. We're not asking you to send it. We're telling you to send it. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be in big denominations, because we don't count it anyway. <laughs> Thank you, and now we'd like to sing our closing number, Love is Just Around the Corner. <laughs> oh. And we shall return. <laughs> Jim Conway. Good. Now go up 2,000. Let me see the phone. Uh-huh. Wait till you see. This looks just like an AT&T phone. Look at the detail. In the knockoff business, that's the whole idea. Does it work? That works. That works. Let me try. try it. Let me try it. Oh, 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 oh. Knock off 10,000. Anyone can make phones that look like AT&T's, but no one's managed to copy AT&T quality. Sorry, I just dropped the phone. You get what you pay for. AT&T, the right choice. Are you still awake? When we turn Johnny off and turn in for the night, some of us will get a great night's sleep. Some of us won't. I'm Ernest Williger. My company makes Stearns & Foster mattresses. They're firm, comfortable, and give you a great night's sleep. So the choice is yours. Toss and turn on your mattress or get a great night's sleep on mine. Stearns & Foster, you can't get a better mattress or a better night's sleep. When the West was young, getting a good beer wasn't easy. Anybody want a Henry? In fact, for the West's finest beer, Henry Reinhardt? beer drinkers would wait for months. Just come in the town. Because it came from hundreds of miles away. Oregon. But if that seems like a lot of trouble, just for a better beer. Now, for supper, it really wasn't. There's a few things not on the regular menu. Because even then, yeah, Westerners did everything in a very special way. In a light cream sauce. Our fresh fish tonight is brook trout almondine. The desert sage hen is especially good. Broiled over mesquite. The Italian taste of spaghetti and meat sauce. You can serve it today with new lunch bucket meals. The homemade flavor of beef stew, potatoes, and gravy. You can fix it just right with new lunch buckets. They're made for your microwave. Made with only the finest ingredients and made hot and delicious in under two minutes. A big healthy helping of chicken noodle soup. New lunch buckets. Homemade taste made easy. Jim Conway is going to be opening July 22nd at the Starlight Theater in Indianapolis with Pat Harrington in The Odd Couple, which would be great. And he's got a new video out. It's a funny spoof about golf lessons called Dorf on Golf. Well, would you welcome our defrocked evangelist, Tim Conway. Good evening. That was genuinely funny, and you did it. As a regular tall person. Yes, uh, I have not been on uh, in the hole for a long time. This might be a whole new career for me. Yes, yes, this whole thing has become my life now. I'm going to have to amputate my legs in order to continue my career. Somebody yelled out in the audience earlier. Says, "Is, is Mr. Dorf going to be here tonight, Lyle Dorf?" Yeah, that's you know, it's funny. You do a lot of things in your career, hoping that something will hit, and then you do some little simple thing that you never think will make it, and uh, zoom, a it grown takes man off. Now, is... now I'm Mr. Dorf. Yeah. yeah. Is this, is this doing pretty well? It's, it, it's, as they say, going through the roof. It's not selling, but it is going through the roof. It's taking off. Yeah. Short course for the serious yeah. golfer. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It, uh, well, 
Now, you know how we do this. Well, we I, have to bury me, I, of course. I saw the cover here. Yeah. I don't know if you can see the cover. And but we you were, were actually golf standing course. in a hole, right? Yeah, right, to the North Ranch this Country Club. And they didn't know that we had to dig holes. <laughs> and they're real happy now, because there's the 27 holes out at that golf so you course. You had to go out there. <laughs> let's, let's, let's show quickly uh, on the monitor I'll show right you, up here. Uh, let me set this up. Yeah. I'll tell you what happened. I was, once I'm buried, I can't move. So right. I can't go anywhere. So whatever happens, earthquake or fire or whatever, I'm left in the ground in this silly outfit. And a dog came by. Oh. And um, oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I'm afraid so. Uh, evidently, he felt I was the same height as a fire hydrant. Oh. And uh, this happened. This is not set up. Watch, watch the monitor here. Is a swing here. Just stick it in. Now, a lot of reviewers have done that to me, you know, but uh, never, never actually had that uh, happen on a golf. So we left it in. That's right. Yeah. What's that guy's name? Uh, Vincent Chiavelli. He's yeah. Uh, excellent. Yeah, he was in Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, and, that's uh, the guy, yes. Yeah. He's a good actor. Perfect. Yeah. One of those actors you see all the time and you can never remember, remember his, his name. name. Yeah, I couldn't either. And it was all <laughs> so two days I was So it was difficult to call him, wasn't it? Very difficult. Him to hey, you, come here. Yeah. What if I went into the store and wanted to buy this? What might they hit me for this? Well, they probably hit you for twenty nine ninety five. Well, I'd imagine not, right away. Not bad, yeah. Although a lot of people have considered it a collector's item already, and yeah. uh, <laughs> selling it for eighty nine ninety five. Yeah. Now you just you just wrote Incidentally, this. Yes. What yeah, is excuse it? me. Before you. No, I have nothing here planned. The good thing about this, and I don't want to. <clears throat> Harping yes. on this, but yes, you do. Yes, I do. <laughs> it started here. It really did because yeah. you said to me, I did that silly thing, and you said, "Why don't you do a basketball player? Why don't you do an elf? Why don't That's you do right. the whole thing?" And I really, I thank you because you started out as a golfer, are. and we were having dinner one night. And I says, "Why don't you come on as a, the, sh the tallest, the shortest basketball, basketball player?" player. And that really worked. That That's was went from there. Huh? Yeah, that was good. So now, uh, it's because of I'm Mr. Dorf, it's your fault. Yeah. So <laughs> now, I know you put all, I know you write a little, most 99 percent of your stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, when you write the thing like the Evangelist, mm -hmm. you come here and do it. Mm -hmm. It's like the monologue. You have no place to try it out. You come out here in front of the nation and you do it. Mm -hmm. Where do you try this stuff out now? That was it. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. I never try anything out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't see any reason to stand in front of a mirror going, making all those faces. No, I mean another audience somewhere. But you no, don't have time. You don't have time to go no. out and do it on the road. Uh, no, you don't. That's well. That's the kind of the scary thing. But the nice thing about doing this show is that it is live. And if it weren't, if it wasn't good, people would actually tell you. I mean, if you did I a have, monologue that wasn't working, I have would, some material know. about constitutional amendments. I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know if you're. I don't know if you're watching from the green room, but I can let you have it. fairly cheap. Yeah, yeah. I was. I was on my way home in my outfit. <laughs> <laughs> saying, I don't need yeah. this. Huh? See, it's also doubly uh, uh, bad when you are in an outfit like that and also bomb. Because <laughs> then you really, you have no place to go, but you're standing there going, hello. I've been in frog outfits and really gone in the toilet, and you stand there in a frog outfit. Yeah, when you're in a sketch, and we've done them here, where you're in costume, there's no way to get out of it. Right. Monologue, you can cut close, you can talk back to the audience, but when you're, when you're locked into a stuff with sketches, you are dead in the yeah. water. Yeah, yeah. But this is, this is the only show where you can actually, this is live. I mean, you don't, you yeah. don't stop and say, wait a minute, that stinks, let's do it again. That's I mean, right. This is, you're out here with your face hanging Somebody out. will let you know. Oh, yes. <laughs> we'll we'll sure. take a break. We'll be right back. Ready will let me know. <laughs> That's great, great. Bring home the bacon. Bacon double cheeseburger. From Burger King. A quarter pound of beef deliciously flame broiled with cheese. So satisfying. Bring home the bacon. Bacon double cheeseburger. Burger King, the best food for fat time. Most bottled beers have to take the heat. The heat of pasteurization. And this can change their real taste. But there's one kind of beer that's not heat pasteurized, draft beer. And now there's real draft beer in bottles, Miller Genuine Draft. It's not heat pasteurized, it's cold filtered, so it retains all of its rich, smooth, real taste. Miller Genuine Draft. It's as real as it gets. The dark can give you the willies. Everything looks different. <laughs> Boy, now, take Mick a little dark. You might ask, what'd you do? Burn it? Have a little mishap down at the brewery? <laughs> no. 
Michelob Dark is meant to be a richer, smoother, and yes, darker beer. Now, of course, there's some of you that like a dark and bitter drink. That's why I keep the soy sauce. Try Michelob Dark. Don't be afraid of the dark. <laughs> well, Mayor Oates, fill her up with two for 76 unleaded. There's a super spirit. Uh, Murph, is it really the highest octane premium in town? Sure is. Spirit. Hey, Mr. Mayor, look at Super 76. It's more power for your political machine. Oh, no. The spirit of Super 76. Use car, highest octane gas. How could the girls resist, Jill? Beats me. The spirit of 76. Okay, my next guest, George Benson. George opens at Harrison Lake Tahoe for a week beginning this Friday, June 19th, and follows that appearance with a European tour. It's a great pleasure to welcome, as always, Mr. George Benson. George. We'll strike that. That's good stuff. Okay, now we got something else there. Here's an album. Here's an album called Collaboration, and one reviewer called it Two Masters, One Masterpiece. So 
Here are two of the world's most successful guitarists, George Benson and Earl Clue. Guys. <laughs> Do we have to do a commercial first? We'll be back. Oh, we got a couple minutes here. Gee, that's great stuff. That is really a tasty album. Good stuff. You guys seem to obviously enjoy playing together. Do you spark each other? Do you kind of drive each other, challenge? We do. And we have a lot of fun doing it. As you can see, that cover has a yeah. kind of Bartles and James look to it. <laughs> yeah. And we thank you for your support. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, you, do you want to have a night where maybe you don't feel on top of it playing and the other guy can sense that? Does that happen when you're working together? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. And you, kind uh, of have, to, you have to pick it up time. and kind of drive the other person? Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure, but we work through the rough spot. Yeah. How did it come about? How did you decide to uh, do the album? Earl, when he was very young, had a tremendous manager who owned the great club in Detroit, which we played at. It was one of the finest jazz clubs in the country, I yeah. felt. And he said, George, this kid is great. He said, but he needs pizzazz. Somebody needs to take him out on the road and show him what it's all about. So you so became the leader of the group, yeah. huh? Yes. Yeah. Last time you you've done on the show, boy, you did one night you did Tony Bennett, right? Yes, sir. And you did, um, who else did you do? I did uh, Little Nat Cole. Little Nat Cole. Now, and, uh, a lot of people may not remember Mom's Mabley. Right? <laughs> Mom's Mabley was a funny lady, funny comedian, and right? And that's true. She certainly was. One night I had a great idea. 
I was in Springfield, Massachusetts, and I knew she was in town, and they had a talk show on. <laughs> so I had a great idea. I said, I'm going to call the talk show. And I called the guy up, and I said, um, Hello. <laughs> I said, This is the mom. <laughs> and he said, Ladies and gentlemen, wait a minute, hold all the calls. I've got mom's baby on the phone. Well, that's funny. And I said, uh, I just thought I'd skate. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and we had a great conversation, and he laughed. And then all and the guys... you didn't have to take your tea hunt to do it either, That's right? true. <laughs> she was a funny, funny lady. She was wonderful. We'll take a break. We're coming right back. It's touch and go, but you're thinking about those Mars roasted almonds. You're looking for that little reward. Yeah, you're hanging on cause you're dreaming about that Mars buttery caramel You've got your mind on a Mars A Mars bar makes it all worthwhile You earned your Mars bar One great little reward The Polaroid Spectra system is calling Calling the cameras of America And the cameras of America are coming Coming to a remarkable offer on the incredible Polaroid Spectra. For a limited time, any camera, in any condition, is worth $20 toward a Spectra at your local camera store. Imagine $20. Don't you have an old camera that's worth $20 off a Polaroid Spectra? Just another sizzling day in paradise, huh? Well, shiver your senses with a whole new thrill. The thrilling taste of Tropic Freezer, a deliciously new kind of drink, a frozen wine cocktail. Tropic Freezer's slushy, shivery, icy, in frosty flavors like tropical fruit and lemon lime. New Tropic Freezer. Just pop it from your freezer, then revel in paradise. have about a minute or so, so you're up on tour. Yes. Was the album going well? It's called Collaboration once again. It was just it? released today. Yeah, well, it's... Tuesday, and uh, we're on our way to Europe. We're going right. to, to do a lot of jazz festivals up during the month of, uh, of you can uh, July. You can hear the Nice, uh, we're we're going to be up Montreux, in, uh, Nice, and... Uh, yes, make Perugia in Italy. Yeah, that's great, yeah. And we're going to play also in Monaco at the castle for, hey. for Prince Albert, I think his name is, right? Yes. And we're going to be in Lake Tahoe next week. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. Hey, thanks for being here. Thanks, Earl. Thank you Great very show. much. Tim, you open with uh, Pat Harrington and the Odd Couple? That's correct. Yes, we do. Uh, uh, which, in Indianapolis. Which, of which part are you playing? Uh, both of them. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you put on the short kind of legs. Nice job for Pat this time around. Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing Felix. Good. Yeah. That should be great. Well, if not, what the heck, you know, that's we right. tried, that's important. <laughs> You always have a home Not here. A big thing. Oh, yes. You always have a yes. home here and put on your short legs and come back. Uh, <laughs> okay. Tomorrow night, Bernadette Peters, uh, mighty painter Bill Alexander, and Magic Johnson of the Championship <laughs> Lakers. Thank you. Next on Late Night with David Letterman, David welcomes Amanda Plummer. And tomorrow morning on Today, meet some hot new comedians, and American jazz goes to Moscow. <laughs>